IVF or in vitro fertilization is a process where we stimulate the eggs of a woman and after a certain amount of time with these medications we go in, harvest the eggs um, and in the laboratory fertilize these eggs with the husband's or partner's sperm in order to create embryos. And then these embryos, after a few days of developing, are then put back into the uterus of the woman where hopefully they will implant and the woman will conceive and have a pregnancy. When you go into your primary care and you're thinking that there may be issues with trying to conceive, I think it's an important time in your health care to bring it up to your, to your physician. A lot of physicians just don't include those type of questions with their repertoire. Um, so if you're having difficulty, if things aren't happening the way they should be, if your cycles are irregular, if your husband has a history of prior issues, or if you're just concerned that there may be some other factors that may be contributing to your inability to conceive, you need to bring it up to your, to your physician. Um, at that point, your physician is going to have several options, and, and most physicians will decide at some point, this is beyond the scope of my, of my experience, I'm going to send you off to a fertility specialist. Some physicians may say, listen, I'm going to send you off to a gynecologist at this point. Whatever the course or path that you follow, I think at some point you just need to be very clear that this is a concern of yours. At the first visit, in addition to a very thorough medical history, we're going to ask you questions about your family history. We're going to ask you about genetic problems in your family. We're going to ask you about whether or not anybody in your family had issues conceiving or had um, repetitive miscarriages then we're probably going to do a very thorough physical exam. Um, and usually this involves listening to your heart, listening to your lungs, the same type of exam you would get if you went to your primary care. But now we're going to be focusing a little bit on your reproductive system, your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, and your uterus. And there are several ways to evaluate those. Um, it will involve a very thorough pelvic exam, and most, most likely it will involve doing a transvaginal ultrasound, which gives us some really nice imaging of your reproductive system. Um, at the same time, we may get some blood tests to evaluate some of your hormonal um, levels. We may get some blood tests to look for infectious disease issues. We'll schedule some type of procedure to evaluate your uterus and fallopian tubes. And then, of course, we can't forget your partner. If it's a male partner, we'll get him set up to do some blood tests and to do a semen analysis. If it happens to be a female partner, we'll get some blood tests on her. If you happen to be a single woman just interested in conceiving, um, well then obviously most of the uh, things we'll do will be focusing just on you. In general, we encourage patients who think they may have issues with conceiving to not wait too long. What does that mean? Well, if you're under the age of, of 35, 36, you know, after about 12 months, that's a reasonable amount of time for you to have had a conception. If you're above the age of 35 or 36, typically six to eight months is more than enough time for you to have a conception. And of course, if you're above the age of 40, um, you know, your window of time in order for this to occur, or for us to provide treatments that may be successful, really becomes short. That, that window is, is very, very narrow. And you should start thinking about coming to your clinician after just a few months of trying. Choosing an IVF center is a very, very important process. Um, the easiest way to pick a center is obviously to see whom your primary care or generalist refers to. Our experience suggests that most primary cares and most general gynecologists refer based on a specific pattern. Someone they've met at a prior meeting, someone they may have gone to school with, and those are all good reasons to, to form a referral base. But in 2010, 2011, you can be a smart consumer as well. When you go and you're thinking of, about buying a television, what do you do? You go online, you go on to some of the websites, you figure out what's the best model, what are people's reviews on a specific piece of equipment you're going to buy. Well, now you can do that when you're looking at an IVF center. So don't necessarily just go on what your referring doctor suggests. Go online, and there's several places you can go to find information. There's the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology, or SART, S-A-R-T. You can put that onto your Google, Google search engine and get information about each IVF center in North America. You can go to the Centers for Disease Control and say, uh, you can type in Assisted Reproductive Technology, and it will show you information about each IVF center in the country because we're all legally required to send all of our statistical data to these sites so that 
it's, it's consumer uh, friendly. What their statistics show, what other success rates, talk to people who may have gone there, um, talk to some of the uh, other doctors. You can visit the site and say, let me go visit the center and see if I get a good feel for the center. Let me talk to the nurses. Let me talk to the doctors. Sometimes you may want a smaller center. Uh, where you may feel like you're not more of a number, but more of a real person and a patient. Um, you know, once again, you don't want to go to a center that's small that doesn't have good success rates as well. So you really want to do your homework a little bit and try to figure out what's best for you.